the biggest day that the club has ever had or probably will ever have and probably the same could be said for Clare football at this stage. Most of the Kilmurray are Brickham players went to secondary school in St Joseph's Spanish Point. The Kilmurray manager, Michal McDermott, a native of Cavan, is now a local hero, especially when he visits to present Munster College's medals. There are a bunch of players that have huge belief in each other. They have huge belief in their own game and they're, they enjoy life. And I think they're going to go into Crow Park and enjoy the occasion. And it's an opportunity for them to express themselves, to, to show what they're capable of doing on the biggest stage that they're going to probably face in their career to date. On Wednesday, there'll be nobody home in Quilty Mullacourcourt. In fact, West Clare will probably be closed down. As the sun sets over Mutton Island, the people of Kilmurray Arbrickan are ready for their first ever All-Ireland Final. Question is, <laughs> is Coke Park ready for Kilmurray Arbrickan? And that report from the man from Quilty, Kevin McStay. I remember back in the 70s, my own club, Kilmurray and John O'Gallery, which you know very well, a very small club, playing in the club semi-final against Nemo Rangers. And to us, it was just extraordinary to be playing against these guys. Now we have two small clubs, if you like, yeah. in the All-Ireland Final. It's an amazing story, you know, Clare and, and Antrim. And there is massive, you know, I suppose, fun, excitement, buzz around it. But you have to get back to the reality of it. The, the 15 All-Ireland medals that are, going to be, that are going to be, or the 30 All-Ireland medals they're going to give out uh, on St. Patrick's Day, the same as the ones they gave out last year and, and the year before. So there's an All-Ireland at stake. And, and the, the crucial thing is how they get away from, you know, all the hype of Marty visiting both clubs and so on the reality of a big stadium. I thought you going to say how they're going to get away from Marty. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> and, uh, you know, really keep their minds on, on, on what this is about because there's massive disappointment if you don't come home with it. Like the the build-up is great, but yeah. the, the aftermath, as you know from Killarear and I know in And you know from Mayo. Yeah. And, so and they're on. playing in the Mayo colours, by the yeah, way. Yeah, well, they, they have a head start there, I see, all right. <laughs> but it's very closely uh, matched. There's very little between the teams. I've seen them pretty closely this year and both of them feel they've unfinished business yeah, with yeah. that angle. But I would, I would give a sniff, I think, towards, towards uh, Kilmurray. I think the way Galls play is going to suit them. The hunting packs Kilmurray mm. and they're very tight. Um, if they can stop the, the, the Galls uh, team scoring goals, I'd say they're going to win it. All right, Kevin. Now, this year's All-Ireland Club Harding Final is a real clash of heavyweights. From Kilkenny, it's the Henry Shefflin-inspired Ballyhale Shamrocks, while from Galway come the defending club champions, Portumna. Catherine Davis reports. Despite their long history, Portumna only came into the national consciousness in the last decade. What an impact the Galway side have made since they won their first county title a mere seven years ago. Portumna's arrival on the national scene has coincided with the emergence of rare talents like Joe Canning, one of several brothers who donned the blue and yellow. Nicky Brennan, the president of the GA, presents the Tommy Moore Cup to Ollie Canning. Obviously, it was a great feeling, especially being, uh, being with Portumna. Uh, there's no, no better feeling, I suppose, than to lift it with the club. But, uh, you know, it's only the, the captain's only a figurehead in Portumna. We, uh, you know, all the guys were, were leaders on the field, and that's the way we're approaching this game again on uh, Wednesday. So, you know, it's, it's great. it was a great honour. It was a nice feeling, but, you know, I only accepted the cup on behalf of everybody. And, Oli, in terms of doing it three in a row, which is what you're trying to do on Wednesday, is there a lot of pressure locally to achieve that elusive dream? Um, I don't think so. I mean, uh, the pressure is just to, to try and perform, you know, as best we can on the day as a team. Uh, I think, you know, a lot of people in Portumna, you know, could never see the day that Portumna would be in Crow Park, you know, the third All Ireland in a row, and that's mind, you know, winning one. But, uh, you know, I think the people in Portumna are happy enough with, with the success we've had so far. But the team at the moment, we're, we're just trying our best to, to go out every day and, and play it to the best of our ability. And hopefully next Wednesday, if we can do that, we, we have a good chance. Their opponents next Wednesday, Valley Hale Shamrocks, are one of only two clubs, along with Fur, to have won the club title on four occasions. Chad Fitzpatrick was on the Valley Hale team that won three years ago and has happy memories of that day. I suppose for, for all of the players on the panel um, in 2007, it was, it, it was our greatest achievement, really. Um, to think that there's only about 2,000 people in, in the parish, you know, and to, to be able to, to reach the Ireland, Ireland final, you know. Um, there's so many clubs all around Ireland. Um, it's, it's a great, great achievement, and to come out on top, um, it's just great for everyone involved. Uh, so we'd, uh, we'd love to be able to do it again um, in 2010. Nicely into Joe Canning. It hits the post. Back again. He spoons it into the centre. Driven to the back of the net by Kieran Ryan, and a 
that's a fifth goal for magnificent Portumna. Without a doubt, last year uh, Portumna blew us off the pitch, um, no question about that. Um, we've been doing a lot of work and uh, trying to get ourselves right and to not let that happen again. Uh, Portumna are their worthy favourites, they've, they've been unbeatable the last two years and um, I just, um, I think, we, I think we, we'll give them, give them a good game. Revenge is very much on Barry Hills again and a classic encounter was in prospect as Portumna chase an historic three in a row while the nation holds its breath in anticipation. Yeah, that's the eagerly awaited club hurling final, but the question, Cyril Farrell, is who's going to win it? First of all, it's going to be a great one. You have the two we best hope. club teams. We have the two best club teams in the country, no shadow of a doubt. Pertumna are going for an unprecedented three in a row. Fantastic side. The best club team I've seen in Galway, I'd say, in my time anyway. Just brilliant. Mm. Ballyhale have a great team as well. They're still hurt now, I think, from last year because they were really kind of outfoxing out guns. Fell away early on the first half, came back into the game, fell away again the second half and they're living for this all year, really, a year and a half. But can they do it is another thing. But Tumna are worthy favourites. Should just about edge it, but I wouldn't be surprised if this one even went to a replay because they know another very well. And know, James McGarry now has taken always coach yeah. of uh, Baddy Hale since last year. He went in very detail, very much in the Brian Cody line. You know, he kind of, he's understudy for a lot of years. They would learn a lot from him. He'd be trying to, to stop the ball from going in to that full forward line. D- Damien Hayes and Joe Cannon inside are lethal if that ball goes in. And he'd also try to probably stop the other side, Oli Cannon is a great man to read the game and, and put balls spinning around the place and a lot, a lot of attacks developed there at him. If they can get on top there, it's easy to say that, but they have so much pace, mm. I just think they'll come out on top again. All right, Cyril. Now, also this weekend in Gaelic Games, we had the passing away of former GA president Pat Fanning. Now, Pat played hurling for Waterford and for Mount Sion and held many high offices in the association, including those years as president from 1970 to 73. Well, perhaps the most significant event of those years was... Rule 27, the ban. Here's Catherine Davis. So I am asking Congress if they would permit me to call upon, and I would hope that the counties would agree, to call upon one of the counties, if one of those counties would formally move and second the deletion of Rule 27. Although personally in favour of the retention of the infamous Rule 27, he won much acclaim for the even-handed manner in which he handled that contentious debate. Well, in the name of Congress, I declare Rule 27 deleted. Well, I suppose when one thinks of Pat Fanning, one thinks of one of the outstanding leaders the organisation has had as president over its long history, a uh, man of tremendous integrity, an inspiring leader, tremendous auditor. And possibly most people will remember him for um, his dealing of the, uh, the ban rule when it left in, in, and when it was uh, taken off the, off the um, official guide in 1971. And I think everybody knows that, that Pat was very strongly opposed to its removal at that time, but it's the manner in which he dealt with it uh, in such a distinguished and, and such a, 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 a very generous manner. Uh, again, indicative of the outstanding leadership that he gave. A lifelong member of the famous Mount Sion Club in Waterford, he also played an important part in Waterford's glory years in the late 50s and early 60s. And during this time, Waterford won the Lee McCarthy Cup. His wife Maura died some years ago and he is survived by his daughter and three sons. Uh, Pat Fanning, who passed away this morning. Well, that's more or less it then from Sunday Sport for this week. Now, but as ever, just before we go, a look ahead to some of the sport coming up on RT television during the week. MS tomorrow night is our soccer magazine show, which reviews all of the weekend's action in the Airtricity League. And that programme is at seven o'clock. Then straight after that, it's against the head in which we look back at all of the events from this weekend's Six Nations Championship. Now, the annual Cheltenham Festival goes to post this coming week. We'll be following what's almost certain to be another dramatic and exciting week on both RTE1 and RTE2 television, starting on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday night, we have highlights of those All-Ireland Club finals, and you can see that programme here on RTE2 at 10.50. So then, it just remains for me to thank Cyril Farrell and also Kevin McStay for their contribution tonight. I hope that you enjoy the St. Patrick's celebrations and that you'll be able to join us back here on Sunday night next. And just a reminder that we're on the air at the earlier time of seven o'clock next week. In the meantime, take care.